The final issue with a poor sales process is that you need to find out in advance. Quite often, if you're selling to a bigger company, you will actually be selling to a committee. But when you go for that first meeting, it's likely you'll be meeting one or two people and the other members of the committee are unknown to you. So, for example, uh, we work with an IT company. We're selling fantastic IT systems into the health service. And, and the background of this company, they had good technical staff and, and on their board they had um, doctors, surgeons, who really understood why that IT product would be fantastic for other doctors and other surgeons to use. So the first step, of course, is to meet with the doctor or the surgeon, which in itself isn't always easy because they're really busy people. Um, so the sale to them is, is fairly straightforward. They might look at this IT product, they might see why it's better than the system they have at the moment, and they might really want it, but they can't actually make a decision. The frustration for the IT company is there'll be a whole load of people in the background who can say no to that proposal, even though the person who's using that IT system really, really wants it. So now you've got a situation that some people refer to as having a white knight in that organisation. Somebody who's on your side, somebody who wants to buy your product, but they now have to go through a whole load of hurdles before you actually get your sale. And those hurdles might involve talking to a finance director, talking to a health uh, trust director, talking to a purchasing manager, perhaps talking to their different IT team. Um, and all of these people can kill that proposal. They can all, at some point, any one of them could say no, but they're not necessarily in the meeting with you so that you can answer their questions and address their concerns. So the problem now becomes helping your white knight negotiate his or her way through the purchasing process, which they may not be particularly familiar with themselves. So another tip for improving your sales and your sales conversion rate. And this is to do with psychology. Imagine you're back in primary school as a child and somebody comes into school, perhaps a teacher or a visitor, and asks you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Now, most people in that situation would have talked about something that they thought would be really aspirational. So it used to be when I was growing up that um, a lot of boys wanted to be train drivers, for example. Um, and, and a little while on, that might have been they wanted to be a, a pilot in the RAF. Um, and a lot of the, the, the girls when I was growing up, you can see my age now coming through here, a lot of girls might have been wanting to do the caring professions, like a doctor or a nurse or a teacher. I don't recall in all the time I was growing up or in all the time I've met business owners since and asked them that question, that anybody has ever said to me, I wanted to be a salesperson. So that's a really interesting observation. I don't know if you have children at home, you might want to go and ask them what they want to be when they grow up. And the reason they don't say, I want to be a salesperson, is that we think of salespeople as being the lowest life form on earth. They're there with the bankers and the estate agents, and God forbid, they're there with the marketeers because everybody assumes that salespeople are out there to do some sort of deal, that they're going to get one over on you, uh, that they won't be truthful with you. And so um, when you're dealing with somebody that's selling to you, at the back of your mind is the idea that it's okay for you not to be truthful with them. So if you imagine, and I've worked with, with lots of buyers in large organisations, you know, big, big uh, multiple retailers, they all have buyers who are responsible for certain products or product ranges. And these buyers are treated like gods, you know, they're really, they're really up here, they're really important people. And they can be very demeaning of you when you arrive as a supplier and they sort of think of you at this level. Now, the problem with that relationship, when you've got the buyers who think they're here and you're there, is sort of you're having to look up to them and sort of beg them for information. And that means that you're not getting the truth from your buyer or your prospect about actually what they need. It's perfectly okay to lie to a salesperson. They're just a salesperson. We've probably all done it on a different level if we've needed to buy something as an emergency purchase. So I don't know, recently um, my iron broke because I put the wrong water in it and it had all uh, calcified up and I needed an iron right now because I was fed up 
of ruining the clothes that I was ironing with, with all this calcium coming out on, onto the clothes. So my husband was going shopping. Can you get me a new iron? I just can't bear this anymore. So he'll be off down to the high street, into the shop, and he'll turn up and, and instead of being, you know, two or three irons on display, there will have been maybe 30 or 50 of these things. Some helpful salesperson will have come up to my husband and said, Sir, can I help you? And I'm betting his response would have been, No, no, I'm fine, I'm just looking. So there's somebody who's actually willing to, to help you make that decision, talk about the different products that are out there, which ones are better, whether it's worth paying a bit more. They have all the knowledge that he needs to make a good decision, and he's actually sending them away. So that's quite a tricky one to get round because you don't know what motivates the buyer. And the buyer quite often isn't very honest with you. So you really have to work at this relationship um, and some manuals will talk about, you know, it's, it's power play, it's, it's what you wear when you go in, it's which chair you sit in round the table, it's how you stand and present your stuff. Um, and I think it's a little bit more basic and more fundamental than that. It's about establishing from the outset, before you go to the meeting, so when you're talking to them perhaps on the phone about whether you should meet, you need to understand that that time, that hour or that two hours that you're both putting aside in your diary is actually going to be a meaning conversation for both of you. So you probably want to do on the phone a little bit of, of information gathering. Um, you really do have the right to ask them questions that they might not normally be asked. Like, you know, have you got an existing supplier? Um, how's your existing supplier doing? Is there a, a problem with that relationship? Is there something more that you need from that product or service? And the problem is if you don't ask those sort of questions, you are on that level of the buyer being up here and you're begging and you need to be able to balance it. So if we're both investing our time, is it worthwhile? We are looking to see is there a good fit between what you want to buy from us and what we supply. And so that meeting becomes then a meeting of equals and not a meeting of unequals.